to win this end game, which was not winnable. So I just spent, uh, I was able to get a huge advantage on the clock, which may or may not have had an impact on the game. We will never know. But this should, I mean, you could, you could give me. I mean, the game had a five second delay on it, which means that before the clock starts ticking, it'll take five seconds before that. So. Uh, Five seconds each move to make a move. I would be able to hold this any day. So in light to e6, rook to d2, late to d8, rook to e6. I mean, at this point, I was just trying to wear him down. So now I'm trying to do something actually here. So I'm saying, hey, I'm making him think about this position now. I'm trying to take away his little fortress of the knight and king on these two squares. So I brought the king to e7. It's a reasonable solution. So here, I go check. I just want him to re-establish his fortress and see if I'm challenging him to see if he can re-establish it. And here I focus. Well, for, it's, this is a very important check. Just push the king one step further away. That's one tempo that he may want. For so I, on, I instinctively did it. I didn't calculate. I didn't need to calculate whether that was a good move or not because it was just instinctive for me to understand that if I can push him one tempo away. It has to be good. It has to be advantageous. Although, you know, I don't know that I'm it's gonna be winning, but look, I don't think the I don't know the position is gonna be winning either, so let's just continue on. King A six, rook E three. Look, I like I said before, I am focused on dominating this knight. Trying to force it onto an island of its own. Now, at this point, I'm just threatening king to e4, and I think at this point, I think he's lost. The knight is too far away. Again, dominating this knight. Trying to isolate the knight even more. Well, he played here, king b5, king b4, because I'm not going to give up my domination on the knight. King b6, king e4, knight to h2, which might have been the, the last, the, well, what sealed the deal, if you will. Rook to g3. Great move. Great move. Good form. Just closing the knight off from everybody. So, if he tried to come back with the king, you don't play king to get careless and play king to e3. Because, knight to f1, check. And it is a draw. Again, which would be very disappointing if 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 you worked 109 moves and blew it with 109th. Right, so king to d3, good form. G5 check, you want to keep this king out of here, and then king to e2, and then the threat of, because now you've just dominated the f1 square, so just rook coming back, and as 
is a win. Easy win. I mean, so you king. And I just play here. And the knight comes off the board. And we can win. Rook versus king. Here I played here, rook to g2, again focusing on the principle of domination. Okay, king to f5. Here for a second I thought, oh boy, I blew it because I thought, well, I was had to play here. Well, as it turns out, this would have been a winning move anyway. Either way, so, because after kink here, you obviously don't play. Well, you, this works too, but I was going to say, you obviously don't play kink here, because knight to e3, and the knight escapes. But, you don't play this. Main line. Wizard's a great move. He comes out. And then you play with check. And this is over. So, he played. But I didn't play that. I played good technique. King to d3. Edging this king out. So he played king to d4. Maybe I could have played here. Maybe this would have been slightly better technique. I don't know. Really? It doesn't matter. King to e2. King to e4. Yeah. King takes. King here. Rook takes. He played on, but it's. This is. Lost. And here he resigns. So, this was my game versus Michael Embertutsian. He was a. 1826 player at the time. He is son of an international master. Um, he uh, he won the under 1800 section at the Western Class Championships in Agora Hills and uh, a few months earlier. So he's been improving his game a little bit. So but at the end of every game, it's good to wrap up and take stock of what happened in the game. So let's quickly just go fly through the game. Knight f3, c6. There's a sub. The queens came off. And here he made a mistake. He should have played knight to d6. His two main counterplays. His main counterplay comes from the advancing of the e6 and c or c6 pawn. Knight b6, knight on, the knight on d7 helps that. Knight to b6 was a mistake. Because it take, took away from the possibilities. So, I want to just zip right through this. And here we also notice that I made a mistake with bishop to c4, allowing him play c4. <sighs> Also noticed that I made another mistake. I should have played rook takes c4. But so these are all very critical moments of the game. F4, another critical moment. He made a mistake. He should have taken with either the knight or just moved the bishop to f6. Would have been fine as well. But he took with the bishop, and I was very happy when I saw this move played on the board. So, b5. I don't think there was much choice. I mean, he could have played here, bishop to d2, but then rook a2. And I don't, 